Hi everyone, it's Katie here. Welcome back to another practice. Today we're doing a hip flexibility routine using our yoga blocks. If you don't have yoga blocks, that's okay. You can still do this routine. I find that using the blocks helps us to go a little bit deeper and gives us a little bit more support in the poses. But you can always substitute yoga blocks for a pillow or a cushion. Just choose the firmest one that you have. So go ahead and get what you need and then we'll meet back here on the mat for reclined cobbler's pose. So you can come down onto your back having your yoga blocks of course nearby. And then once you're there take the soles of your feet together making a big diamond shape with your legs. We'll put our yoga blocks in underneath the thighs or maybe under your knees, wherever feels best for you. Something that will just give you that little bit of support for your legs. And once you feel comfortable, you can take your palms to face the roof. Maybe close your eyes. We're allowing gravity to do all of the work here, so don't force anything. Relax your shoulders, loosen your jaw. Maybe you can drop your hips into the mat. We'll stay here for two minutes in total. bringing your awareness to your breath and encouraging your breath to get that little bit deeper, a little bit slower, if that feels comfortable for you. You might find that your mind is drifting away here and that's okay. As soon as you realize that it's gone, bring it back to your mat by observing the sensations you feel in your body or by following your breath in and out. We'll ask our knees to come back together. You can move nice and slowly, there's no rush. Remove your yoga blocks just to the side of your mat and we'll do some windshield wipers here. So feet come to hip distance apart. Exhale to drop the knees to one side. Inhale to pick them up and exhale to drop to the other side. Repeat that movement, moving to the pace of your own breath, getting rid of any tension from your hips. Pause the next time that your knees are in center and we'll send our legs out long on the mat. From here we'll come into a supine twist. Bring the sole of your right foot up onto your left thigh. Hold this top knee with your left hand. Reach your right arm up. Stack your hips on top of each other, bringing your knee over towards the left 
and release your right arm back down to the right. Keep both of your shoulders connected to the mat here. So keep an eye on that right shoulder. If it tries to pop off of the mat, just reverse out of your twist a little bit so you can keep both shoulders grounded. You can look up or you can look over towards your right hand for more of a twist. And we have our yoga block somewhere underneath our left knee. It's okay if the knee doesn't quite make it to the block yet. As we hold this pose for the next two minutes, we'll keep encouraging the knee down. So maybe eventually this block will form a little platform for it to rest on. And remember, you can always change the height of your block if you need it to be a little bit higher or lower. So just experiment here. Once you feel settled, find your breath. Try to relax your body and just let gravity do the work here. If you feel any tingling or numbness in this outstretched right arm, you can just bring it down a little bit lower alongside your body. Let's take one more big breath in and out. When you're ready, come back to center, slowly reversing out of the pose. Both legs stretched out long again. You can shake them off if you need to. And then we'll take that twist to the opposite side, bringing your left foot up onto your right thigh. Right hand holds this top knee, left arm reaches up. Stack your hips, bringing your knee over towards the right this time and your left arm back down to the left. Remember, both shoulders stay connected to the mat. You can have your block underneath your left knee. And again, it's okay if it doesn't make it to the block yet. We have two minutes here in this pose for the body to open up and get a little bit deeper into this twist. You can look up or you can look over towards your left hand. Notice your breath again, wherever it is. Follow it in and out and just let your breath work with gravity here to get you a little bit deeper into this pose, if that's what feels good for you today. Take your last breath here in this pose. And 
then gradually start to reverse, sending your legs out long again. Take some time here just to rest on your back, feeling the effects of those twists. Sending your breath in wherever it's needed the most. And here you might need to do some windshield wipers again, or you can bring your knees up into your chest to release your lower back and your hips. Give yourself a big hug here. While you're here, congratulate yourself for making it onto your yoga mat today and for doing this practice. We'll bring our feet back down onto the mat underneath our knees this time, setting ourselves up for supported bridge pose. Keep your ankles below your knees and press your lower back down into your mat so it's flush to the ground. Your tailbone is pointing away from you. From here, you can lift your hips up towards the sky and place a block in underneath your sacrum here. So again, we have different options for our block. You can go small, you can go medium, or maybe you can go tall. I don't think tall suits me today. So again, experiment here and find what will work for you. If you're working with two blocks today, remember you can always combine the two to find different heights that might feel good for you and your hips. You can have your palms facing up or down, whatever feels best for you. Try to touch your chest to your chin without moving your head. So you open up your lungs. And here in supported bridge pose, we are allowing gravity to do the work. Opening up through the front of your hips. We'll be here for one minute in total. Take one more big breath in and out. Now from here, you can switch your block onto its smallest setting, if it's not already there. Send your left leg out long and bring your right knee up into your chest. This is a great stretch for your psoas muscles. So as always here, start nice and gentle, just encouraging your right knee a little bit closer to your body. Listening out for those signals for when your body has reached its limit. And once you get that signal, pause, wait for a while, and maybe with time as the muscles start to relax and open up, then you can ask your knee to come a little bit closer again. And 
and we're holding this pose just for one minute each side. After your next exhale, send that right foot slowly back down to the bottom of your mat and you can switch to take that left knee into your chest. Move slowly, wait for those invitations to go a little bit deeper if you get them and if you don't get them, that's okay. One more big breath. And then when you're ready, you can send your left foot back down to the bottom. Remove your block from underneath. Come to lie on your back. Just resting here for a few seconds, feeling the effects of all the poses we've done so far. Now you can start to peel yourself up off your mat, slowly coming again to sit, and we'll make our way into a yogi squat. So luckily we have our blocks, it makes this pose a lot easier. We're starting by bringing the feet onto the mat. I'll come this way. You have your toes pointing away from you. So it doesn't matter if these heels make it onto the mat or not. That's why we have our blocks. They can act like a little seat. So again, there's lots of options with how high the seat can be. You can use the tall version of your block, just the small one, the medium one, or you can even stack two on top of each other. So take your time. Once you're ready, you can come down onto your seat. This is a little bit too tall for me, but I'm going to keep it this way. Your elbows come into your knees and they might gently start to press your knees further away from you. Hmm. So even though I said these blocks are too tall for me like this, I still feel a really nice opening in the hips. So I guess maybe it's not too tall afterwards. So the more you can push your elbows against your knees, the more of an opening you'll feel. You can bring your palms down in front of your chest. And while you're here holding this squat, just be aware that you might start to slouch forward. If that's happening, open up your chest again. Keep your spine nice and straight. Holding here for two minutes in total. Now, of course, if it becomes too much, you can always just come back out of this pose, take a break and then join us again. Sending your breath deep into your body. Each inhale is relaxing your body and your mind and each exhale is getting rid of any tension that you feel.
take one more big breath in. Doing really well. This isn't easy, even though we have our blocks. Once you've exhaled, you can start to release your hands back down. You might come into a very brief standing forward fold here. So just start to straighten up your legs. We can remove our blocks for now. Keep a little bend in your knees here and just drop your hands and head. Take a few big breaths in and out. If you enjoy this kind of practice using yoga blocks and moving nice and slowly, I have a full playlist of videos of yoga using yoga blocks. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. You can check that out to find your next practice. And then when you're ready, come back down onto your mat to find your seat. So thank you so much for practicing with me today. I hope you enjoyed using your yoga blocks in your flexibility routine and hopefully your hips are feeling a little bit more flexible now. Don't forget to check out Bendability for Beginners as well if you are serious about increasing your flexibility. This course will help you to do that with just 20 minutes of yoga a day. So I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.